Welcome back, Reddingtonians. As always, I'm the man, Bob Frankfurter. Life is a series of choices. Am I talking about the time I wore the wrong mustache and crushed my dreams of hosting Inside Edition, Fox and Friends, Survivor? Of course not. I'm talking about a much more serious life choice. Dry flies or nymphs? Search your soul. Are you a dirty, bobber bouncing, bead head dredging lead hucker? Or are you a pretentious, silk line dressing, delicate hackle floating dry fly purist? Good news friends, you can be both. And here to show us how is our very own expert, Flat Brim Billy. What's up Bob? Nice to have you back young William. Whatever. What's up ladies? The dudes too I guess. Y'all know me as a streamer expert, but I fish dry flies too. Big ones, because big dries are basically just floating streamers. True, if your dry flies are big enough, they can also be bobbers. Any dry fly will work for a bobber, but it's gotta have a gang of foam to float that nymph. Make sure you shorten up your leader for this rig. I usually start with a seven and a half foot 3X leader. Then I tie a section of 4X tippet off the bend of the dry fly and attach a nymph to the back end. That way, your floating streamer is a dry fly and a strike indicator. You're giving those fish what they want, son. The length of your dropper depends on the depth and speed of the water, but probably go somewhere between 10 inches and three feet. If fish are chowing emergers or sitting shallow, go short. If you're trying to drop down into some deep, dark pocket, let it hang down. Try out different depths. This ain't no math class, son. This is science, experiment. Get your drifts right, mind your mends, and set the hook if you see the fish take the dry fly or if it goes under. I fish this stuff all through the summer. Big stone flies and big hoppers with a tasty nymph underneath. That's actually good advice there, loopers. You don't have to choose between floaters and sinkers. You can do both. And until next time, choose your mustache wisely. 